everyone, Michaela with LearnWire here, and today we are going to go over a 4AI. 4AI is a research assistant that will help you search, summarize, and translate your research. You can either upload documents or input a link and it'll analyze that link for you. Now this is an alternative to copy.ai or Jasper, and it's going to be best for marketers, small businesses, and solopreneurs. It's got a 4.9 average taco rating across 275 reviews, which is really good, honestly. A 4AI was founded by Alec Nguyen. And as we look at the questions and the reviews, it looks like he's very responsive. I see a response to just about every question that people have. And looks like he responds to most of the reviews as well. So we've got a very responsive developer. We always love that. Now let's take a look at our tiers. We've got three different tier options. We've got tier one at $49, includes all features. You get unlimited chatbots, unlimited chatbot queries, 20 gigs of document storage, 1,000 one-time API credits, and you can also bring your own key via open router. This is gonna work with chat GPT-4, Claude, Sonnet, Gemini, and more. The tier two license starts at $169. You get unlimited chatbots, unlimited chatbot queries, 60 gigs of document storage, 5,000 one-time API credits. You can bring your own key via open router. You get advanced native AI models and you get an advanced AI model rate limit of 20 calls every three hours. And finally, our tier three license at $399 comes with unlimited chatbots, unlimited chatbot queries, unlimited document storage. You get 15,000 one-time API credits. You can bring your own key via open router. You get advanced native AI models and you get an advanced AI model rate limit of 50 calls every three hours. Now, this is the dashboard for a 4AI. We've got our upload selections, so we can upload either a file or a URL or a DOI. We can import some items. We can add a library. We have our library. We've got some stuff going on, but it's not going to be super overwhelming. So let's go ahead and upload a file. Looks like we've got just a basic document uploader. And I'm actually going to upload a URL and I'm going to grab just this page from Wikipedia. All right, so we've got our tornado records. So this is going to be right here. We have the size, we have the author. There is none because it's just a Wikipedia page. We've got the date published, the date uploaded, and whether or not it's indexed. Now, if we go ahead and right click on this, we've got a few more options. We can get the file info. We can view the file, we can download the file, export the citations, generate a citation, we can use with the research assistant, we can assign a tag to it, or we can move it to a specific folder or the trash. So this is going to be the file info. It's got the full file name, the file ID, who it was uploaded by, the uploaded date, and the size. Here is our file. I did this one just on tornado records. I find tornadoes super fascinating and it's going to have a lot of information. So now up here, we've already got a few options. We can zoom in and zoom out. We can rotate it to the left or to the right. We can jump to the pages. So if we want to go to page five, it'll jump straight to that. We can highlight a text and change the color of the highlight. So if you want to highlight some things in red, you can highlight it. If you want to highlight some things in orange, we can do that there. We can also highlight an entire area. So if this entire area is super important, we can just highlight that. And we can also add a sticky note. So we're going to have our comment be really cool. And we can also search the content. So if we want to look at the more tornado, we can search just right there. So we've got result one of seven. It's going through all instances of the word more. Now, if we need to take a look at all of our notes, we can do so by just clicking this notes and we can see all of the highlighted areas as well as all of our comments. All other functionality side, I'm just gonna say right now that this is gonna be a really good documents editor. So if you're working with a lot of documents, this is going to be a really good tool for you to use. I'm super impressed with this so far. I think this is really cool. All right, so let's go back to our home page. We can export these citations and we can choose what format these citations are in. 
It doesn't have every single format, but it does have some of the more common ones. Now, if there's a citation that is not listed, you can go ahead and generate the citation. And here we can choose the citation style. It's going to have a bigger variety of citation styles for you to use. You can also change the language that you want your citation to be in. And then you can also preview your citation. And if you need to make any changes to it, you can go ahead and do so here. Finally, we have whether or not we can set this as a bibliography citation or just a regular citation. And then we can copy it to clipboard so we can paste it on somewhere else down the road. Next, we can go ahead and use this with our research assistant. This is going to be the chatbot that you use. So when you want to ask it a question about the document, it will give you the answer that you need. So for example, which tornado had the fastest wind speeds? It's analyzing the question. Okay, so it says that the tornado with the fastest wind speeds observed was the May 3rd, 1999 Bridge Creek Moore tornado with a peak wind speed of 321 miles per hour. Fantastic. That's pretty, that's correct. Now, if you want to change which chatbot is giving you the response, you can absolutely do so by clicking on this little drop down button here. We have the option to change it to GPT-4 Omni, GPT-4, 3.5, we have Claude, Claude Haiku, or you can do a custom model to bring your own model to this. And the AI itself has a couple different settings that you can do. So this one, we just did the document retrieval results. So it analyzes the document directly and it'll give you the answers that you need. We also have the semantic scholar. This will augment our research with data from a database with a bunch of peer reviewed research papers. So it's not just taking information from one document. It's also going to grab from a bunch of different peer review articles and kind of supplement its response with that information. It also has a Google search option. So you can add information from Google to your research with complete citations to it. We've asked the document retrieval, which tornado had the fastest wind speeds. Let's ask the same question to the semantic scholar. Here we got a little bit of a more in-depth answer. Well, it still says it's the 1999 Bridge Creek Moore tornado. It gives a little bit more information and a little bit of background as to how these wind speeds are measured and why it's so difficult to get an accurate measurement on it. So then finally, let's try out the Google search fastest wind speeds. Right. So this one actually has a different answer. This one says that the Greenfield, Iowa tornado from earlier this year has the fastest wind speeds on record. And it gives a little bit more of a background on that with citations included. OK, so then let's try one more answer. We'll do what is the widest tornado on record? And it has the El Reno tornado with a width of 2.6 miles. So that is correct. These chatbots don't just have the ability to respond to your questions. We do have the option for prompts, but if we want to change that, we can also summarize the document. So find each chapter of the document and provide a summary for each chapter. Okay, so we have tornadoes annually and monthly. Okay, it's taken a look at the different chapters of the document and then it summarized them by each chapter. And then finally, we can also compare between two documents. So we can compare and contrast information between two different papers. We can set this conversation to private, meaning that only the person asking the questions will be able to see the answers, or we can set this to public. So anyone with a link can see this chat, which is going to be very helpful if you're working in a group and you need to share your results with other people. You can just create a link, send it over, and people will be able to see the questions you answered and they'll be able to see the responses that you got. Let's go back to our dashboard and let's assign a tag to it. We don't have any tags currently made, but we can do so by this create a tag button down here at the bottom. So we want to create the tag and we're going to call this tag tornadoes. So that is tagged as tornadoes. Now let's pretend that we have a bunch of different documents here. You know, we have some on tornadoes, we have some on hurricanes, we have some on floods. Now say we need to see all of the files on tornadoes. We can click this tornadoes tag right here and it'll sort everything by just tornadoes. And finally, if we want to move it to a different folder, we just click on move folder and your folders are all going to be right here. So we'll move it to Michaela's library and it is in my library. If we need to create a new folder, we can do so by clicking these three dots right next to your library header and just do create folder. 
And this folder is going to be severe weather. Let's then move this to severe weather. Fantastic. And we can click on here. We've got all of our severe weather. All right, so that is a 4AI. Not a lot to it, but what it does, it does super well. I am super impressed with this. If I was still in college, easily would use this. Easily, easily, easily. Not only does it have a really neat document editing program that you can use that is super helpful on its own, but I do really like that the chatbot not only will analyze the documents that you've shared, but also with other peer review articles and with Google searches. Not only will it grab information from other sources, but it will also give you those citations. So you're not wondering where exactly it's getting its information from. You can see everything right there. It's very intuitive. I'm super impressed. Probably going to give it a 4.5 just because it doesn't have a dark theme and I'm a night owl and those white screens are bright when it's laid out. Very well done, Alec. Very well done. If you have any questions or comments on the video, please do not hesitate to share them below in the comment section. And until next time, I will see you later. Goodbye.